So will you join me? Go away down the shop I spend some money Go away down the shop It's easy money Go away down the shop So place your bet now Go away down the shop Conducting this interview is Detective Sergeant Dance. Also present is... Detective Constable Singh, Drug Squad. You have a right to a solicitor, Mr. Ball. I am a solicitor, Sergeant. This is a serious allegation, Richard. And that's all it is, an allegation. So let's get this over with and I can get back to work. Okay. We've had a complaint from a Mabel Mildenhall. Do you know her? She's a client. She says your firm was holding money on her behalf. She's incapable of managing her affairs, so I do it for her. And that the money was supposed to be paid to her in cash. But it wasn't. Lovely <laughs> biscuits. Hello, Scobie. Still here, then? Hello, Tina. You changed your mind yet? The offer is still open. I know a very nice Greek restaurant. No, Christos. I won't let you shag me. But you can buy a pair of these very lovely sunglasses. 20 quid normally. 15 to you. <laughs> Tina, what have I told you about using language like that, huh? Oh, and what have I told you about selling you a merchandise across my counter? And what have I told you about wearing low-cut and you can see her bra. Kairdi the banger. Right, well, I'm off to see the bank manager. I will be no more than one hour. Do not let these reprobates get up to any monkey business. And no more than one cup of coffee. No, Dave. Bye, Dave. <laughs> Lovely biscuits. <laughs> You see, Mr. Tilson, what... Ah, it's quite impossible. You have an overdraft facility of £3,000, yet you are currently overdrawn by £3,053. Yes, but... Th this is a bank, sir, not a charitable institution. You have no collateral, and I cannot permit you to incur any further indebtedness. Ah, oh, but my shop... But your shop is rented, is it not? And there are monies outstanding to the landlord? Well, maybe a couple of months, I... Uh, no, sir, I'm sorry. It's, it's quite impossible. <laughs> I know you think I'm not quite the ticket. I think that you smell like you pissed yourself again. But I keep my ear to the ground, and I've heard from a very reliable source that trap one is a very good thing in the 333 Romford. Put a few quid on it. <laughs> and if it wins, then you don't you can buy me a drink. I refuse to accept tips from a man who smells like a litter tray. Now go away. Railway Dave? Hello? Yeah? Oh, sorry, um, Dave's not here at the moment. Can I help you? Yeah, I'm sure I'll be... Oh, hold on. <laughs> Can I write it down? Okay. Rumford's... Yeah. 333. Yeah. Trap 6. How much? Five thousand? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I suppose as it's you. <laughs> yeah, all right. On your account. Yeah, I'll let him know. All right. Bye. 333 Romford. Give us 40 quid on trap one, please, my lovely good girl. Lovely biscuits. <laughs> Still alive. Chris. Roy. Tony. 
guy. So, there were seven of you. Which one's the dealer? What? Tony the Tap, who works for Chris the Greek. Die, who works for Porno Roy. Why doesn't this Die have a nickname, though? He does. His real name's Dave. He's called Die because he dyes his hair black. Getting back to it. So, there was you, uh, this boy Scobie, and this woman with the large chest, which makes seven. That's right. But what I want to know is... Are they really that big, this Tina's? Hello, Tina. You've changed your mind yet? Yeah? You're gonna come and work for me down at the club? Hmm? You and those lovely memories of yours will earn more in an hour down there than you will in a week in this dump. Mm. And of all those dirty perverts fiddling with themselves under their max? Mm. If there's any fiddling to be done, it'll be me that's doing it. Thank you, Roy. But you can buy a very nice pair of my sunglasses. Let's have a look. Die. Make sure you look a complete tit. I'll have a pair. How much are they? 20 quid normally, but you can have a 15. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Where's the wrong foot form? Fifteen quid, you say? That's right. I'll take two. I know you think I'm a uh, one sandwich short of a picnic. I know you smell like a skunk has died in your trousers. But I keep my ear to the ground. And I've heard from a very reliable source that track two is a very good thing in the 333 at Romford. You, you put a few quid on it. <laughs> and if it wins, you could buy me a drink. The day I take tips from a bloke that dresses like a doster is the day I give up the game for good. Now go away. So. One of the others. What was? Who stole Mrs. Mildenhall's money? No one stole any money. And anyway, another three came into the shop after that. Tina, love, give us 50 quid on trap number two in the 333 at Romford. I know you think I belong in an old folks' home. No, Scobie. I know you can't afford that the heating on in your flat. Well, I, uh, I keep me ear to the ground and I've heard from a very reliable source that Trap 3 is a very good one for, uh, for the 333 at Romford. Put a few quid on it. <laughs> if it wins, buy me a drink. Thank you, Scobie. I'll bear it in mind. You know that advert I responded to from that husband and wife couple over on Posh Estate? The swingers? Yeah, yeah, that's them. Well, when I met them last night, it was really great. There were all these really good-looking rich people there. Anyway, after a few drinks, we went up to the bedroom and uh, got it on. Oh, the three of us, look. No, you don't want to be showing me that. Oh, it's all right, I trust you. Just like one of the girls. Look, it was enormous. <gasps> and they both wanted me to do things with his wife. You need to be careful, Tina. You don't know anything about these people. Oh, don't be silly. You never have any problems with swingers or when you're paying for it from escorts. It's when lads think they can get into your knickers for free. That's when all the nonsense starts. Making promises they have no intention of keeping. Getting you to let your guard down and then taking advantage. Can't be doing with it, me. Uh, look, while I'm here, give me 20 quid on the uh, three dog in the 333 at Romford. Everything all right, Dave? Fine, absolutely fine, no problem. I hear the bailiffs have been knocking at his door. <laughs> Serves him right, the tight old git. He got rid of that Volvo he had. He's got an old Skoda now. Uh, Stop it, you two. You wouldn't know what to do if you didn't come in here. There's corals at the high street and Labrook's near the station. Oh, why don't you go down there then? You're not there, are you, Tina? <laughs> Lovely tit biscuits. Scooby! 
What the blino festiniog is this? Well, that's my slip. Well, obviously, no one else tries to get 500 words onto a betting slip, do they? But what does it actually say? Well, it's a, a super eyes. The seven stated horses and dogs. And there's a, a 1 1p accumulator. There's a 7 1p. Yeah, 7 1p 6 folds, 21 1p 5 folds, there's 35 1p 4 folds, 35 1p trebles, 21 p doubles. See? And that's 120 bets, total stake, £1.20. <laughs> yeah, and and, and uh, I've taken the price on the, the first, the second, the fourth, and the fifth. Oh. Tina, you're supposed to check these things. I did. Did he pay on? All in coppers? Yes. Oh, I don't believe it. Anything else happened while I was out? No. Oh, no, yeah. He phoned. Who? You know, the quiet man. Oh. Hmm. What did he want? Well, he, he placed a bet. I wrote down... No, his... don't say it out loud. Not in front of this lot. Show me. Hmm. Oh, no. Oh, my God, fathers. What did you take this for? It's my job, Dave, to take bets. No, not off him, it isn't. You know he never loses. You told me never to knock him back. No, not when I'm here. Not when I can lay it off and make a bit on top for myself, but not when I'm out. It's too late now, the word will be out on the street, and that'll be it, I'm stuck with all this. Right, we've got a couple of hours. Ring Ray and Joe and get them in here pronto. Who the hell is the quiet man? That's just it. Nobody knows. He's the dealer then? No. He's this fearless punter. He never comes into the shop. Nobody ever sees him. He has a telephone account. He places large bets. They always win. Rumour is he has connections in all manner of stables and kennels. Why would a bookie take bets from a man who always wins? Well, normally Dave gets straight on the phone and bets the horse or dog himself. Has enough on to cover the quiet man and a bit more for himself. That way he makes a profit. So why didn't he do just that? It was too late by the time he got back to the shop. The quiet man would have been on all over town. No one else would have accepted a bet on the same animal. What race was it? That's what we all wanted to know. Tina, love, tell me what it was he backed and I'll buy the rest of these sunglasses off you. Don't listen to him. What else have you got, Tina? Have you got those trainers and shell suits? Don't sell out to these two. Tell me, you said I was like one of the girls. Oh, stop it, you three. I can't tell you. It's more than my job's worth. What do you know, Scobie? I heard it's to 333 at Romford. Trap four. Keep it quiet. When he wins, buy me a drink. Tina, love, come in the shop. You can choose any outfit you want. On the house. What? Or you sell French maid and schoolgirl outfits. Do I look like some sort of slapper? Come in the salon, I'll give you a free hairdo and a manicure. Chris, I'm 29. No one who comes into your salon's under 60. I'll do you a free will or a free divorce. I'm not married. Now go away, the lot of you. What have you heard, Scobie? I've heard it's the 333 at Romford. Trap five. Keep it quiet. When it wins, buy me a drink. Okay. Die. Go and buy some lunch. I'll have a prawn sandwich on brown, some of those posh crisps, and a coffee mocha. And don't forget to get the chocolate sprinkle on the top. And don't forget my change. Good idea. Tap! <laughs> Nip down to the takeaway, get me a portion of haddock and chips, just a little salt, lots of vinegar. What about me? Get yourself a pick of egg. Mm. Okay, where am I? Did it bring anything? Alright. Wake up! Please open the boot so I can get out the cleaning materials. I don't have time. It's bollocks! I cannot leave until it's been cleaned off. Pigeon droppings carry at least 53 different diseases harmful to me.
Please tell me these are the last two people. Yes. So one of them must be the dealer then, right? Who are they? Dave regards himself as an equal opportunities employer. Something to do with his strict Welsh chapel upbringing. So he employs a cashier who only gets it on with swingers and sex workers. And debt collectors both with mental disabilities. Mad Ray has Tourette's and Big Joe suffers from Asperger's. we go now? There are almost as many gems that live on car door handles as on toilet seats. No, you don't say. I do. So does new scientists. Don't forget! Mirror, signal, manoeuvre. Would you like this bag, Tina? Give me a fiver on trap four in the 333 at Romford. Hush, hush. Why do you hang around with him when he treats you so badly? Roy's well, been good to me. The world hasn't always been very kind. Ups and downs, you know. Mostly downs, to be honest. And when I've needed someone, he's been there for me. He doesn't like people to see that side of him. You know, the caring, generous Roy. Not a good thing in his line of work. So I uh, swallow my pride from time to time, let him boss me about, and that, you know. Change! Took your man a long time, Chris. Haddock has to be cooked. Mm. You just take prawns out of the fridge. <laughs> 333 at Romford, trap five. Ten pound to win. Change? Fifteen quid? That's pretty expensive, Haddock. Where's the rest? It was a pickled egg, Chris. Have you just had a bit with my money tap? No, Chris. Honest. Useless bloody tap. And the boys are here. Someone's gonna get it. Uh, lovely biscuit. Dave, there we are. Right. Send them in, will you? He says you can go in. I heard him. Shh, toss her. What's up then, Dave? Close the door. It's that damn quiet man, isn't it? Big bet. Tina took it while I was out. Too late to lay it off now. If it comes in, we are right up the taff without a paddle. Yeah, but it might not win, Dave. Well, this is the quiet man we're talking about by year, isn't it? Yeah, fair point. Now, look, we need to get in as many of the Owens as possible. So take this list, right? Start with the ones that owe the most and be back here for, what, 3.30? How far do you want me to go? Do what you need to do. Come on, Joe, we need to get a wiggle on. I don't think I know how to wiggle. Oh, you'll pick it up. Do we have many collections to make? Oh, yes. How much? At least five grand in under two hours. Five thousand? Shh! You will still drive carefully, won't you? Yes. Five grand. <laughs> the quiet man's really gone and standing up the railway this time. He doesn't have five grand to pay, does he, Porno? About as much chance as Vidal Sassoon coming to work in your salon, Greek. Don hasn't won yet. We're talking about the quiet man, Tina. Oh, so what? Uh, listen to the girly. Just another punter. Huh? In 60 years of betting, he has the highest strike rate I've ever known. I've never seen anything like it. Dave, 
Joe's got properly shafted this time, hasn't he? <laughs> Lovely biscuits. It's Tina, isn't it? I bet you she deals over the counter. Probably keeps a stash in her handbag. Or, uh, secreted somewhere around her body. I bet ya she's got one of those inflatable bra thingies. She hides them inside, no one would think of looking in there. We're gonna have to bring her in for a strip search. Will you leave off about the bloody drugs? Those bloody drugs are the only reason I'm helping your retarded little department with this investigation. Who are you calling retarded? That's it, I'm leaving. Sit down! <laughs> Too much bloody vinegar. Did he really bet a dog to win 5,000? Well, you know I'm not supposed to tell you, but... He had five grand on. Blimey. I oh, know, I've never seen Dave this bad. Do you really think he can go under? Even if it's favourite, there's a huge amount of money to find if it wins. Maybe you'll have to bail him out. <laughs> Richard Bull. Oh, hello, Mrs Mildenhall. Yes, I'm fine. They've let you out for a few days. Splendid. You look after yourself now, eh? Uh, yes, my firm still holds over a thousand pounds for you in our client account. You'd like it in cash, are you sure? Yes, I can draw it out for you by the weekend. I'm going to be coming out, Raymond. Soon. He's virtually a chain smoker. Can't smoke in the bank, so he has to come out the back. Don't call me that. One minute. Two minutes, three minutes. Soon. Hello, Whale. Ray! Hello. <laughs> Didn't expect to see you again. Obviously. You ain't come to rob the bank, have you? No, it's you I've come to see. I told Dave that he'll get his money. I haven't got anything until payday. You work in a bank, you blubber monster. Go and borrow some. I can't. They check it every night. I haven't got time to mess about, Whale. You owe Dave a grand and he needs it now. I can't do it, I'm sorry. You can hit me if you want, it won't make any difference. I don't have the money. Joe, come and explain to the whale here exactly what happens to the human head when it's struck firmly with a cricket bat. Of course, it depends on the definition of firmly. But assuming that the bat is wielded by a man of Raymond's height and weight with reasonable aggressive force and intent, then if the bat makes contact squarely with the skull in the area of either the occipital or temporal bones, both of which hold the brain in place, the effect is one of accelerating the brain rapidly against the skull from which, being the porous, spongy substance that it is, it rebounds rapidly with equal velocity. Wait, here! Yeah. Enough. I don't understand. Why would me explaining simple principles of physics and physiology have more effect than you threatening to hit the man with a ticket there? Well, you'd have to be someone other than you to understand that. I can only get 500. But Raymond asked for 1,000. It's all right, Joe. He's tried. We've got other fish to fry. You better have the other monkey for us by payday. Or is the harpoon for you? That was a joke, wasn't it? Well, harpoon, yeah. <laughs> no. Having other fish to fry. Technically, of course, a whale is not a fish, but a cetacean. If you never find out which dog it is in here, you go sniff around Ladbrokes and Corals. I'll take hills and the bald-headed bloke's place. Find out what you can, but be back here at 20 past three. Any chance of a lift? No. Don't have your money then, Roy. I have to sell some more pornos to reload the wallet. Yeah. Take a lot to empty my pocket, Chris. Business calls. Scale we could do with a trim and blow dry, if you're getting killed. <laughs> tap! Tap! They're up to something. Follow that guy, see where he goes. Keep your ears open. Be back here by 3.30. What about you, Chris? I have an idea. Don't just stand there. Get after him or you lose him. Oh, uh, can I take the car? Of course not. What if he's driving? Run! Oh, all right. Two 
cocina. Have you got any other stuff for sale? Yeah. What are you after? What have you got? Well, I've got some Victoria's Secret panties. Probably not quite your thing. Some ladies' sports tops. Maybe you could interest some of the ladies at the salon. They're probably a bit old. Yeah. Oh, got some lovely knife sets. That sounds good. Can I take a look? Yeah. Sure, you stay here and hold the fort. I'll go back, back and get one, all right? Okay. Yeah, right. sure. What the are you doing round your Greek? Uh, Dave, <laughs> I dropped my sunglasses. What, you mean those ones sitting on your head, do you? Oh. The slip is safely tucked away in my office. No shoe. Where's Chris? Where have you been, girl? And what have I told you about leaving the counter unattended? I needed to go. Women's things. Oh, I see. Ah, well, enough said. But don't let it happen again, right? Lousy Greek. When will he be here? I don't know exactly, but this is his patch. How do you know? I used to live right there. He delivers up this street near the end of his round. I thought a postman started work very early in the morning. Yeah, they do. Why is this one still working in the afternoon then? Because uh, this one stops off a lot to do business on his way round. All postmen stop. They have to make deliveries. Now, yeah, here he comes. 23. Ooh. Hello, Posty. Is that Ray? Yes, it is, you blind scumbag. Nice to see you too. I suppose uh, Big Joe's around as well. Can't you see me then? No. I'm sure you're pacing up and down somewhere nearby. We need some dosh, mate. Dave's in trouble. And that concerns me how? Because you owe him, you little weasel, and don't claim you don't. <sighs> Must be an accounting error. My sleet's clean. Railway Dave and accounting error. Leave it out. He counts his coppers every night before he goes to sleep. If he says you owe a monkey, you owe a monkey. I'm at work. Even if I did owe Dave some money, I wouldn't have it on me, would I? <laughs> Posty. You and I both know that there's work, and then there's work. If Joe and I were to tip you and that sack of yours upside down, it won't be just letters that fall out. I don't know what you're talking we about. We know you do amphetamines and tabs on your rounds. It's good cover. Good reason to knock on doors. If you don't have at least a grand on you, then I'll go shag a sheep. Section 69 of the Sexual Offences Act 2003 provides that a person commits an offence if he penetrates a living animal it's with... a figure of speech. The same provisions do not apply to an animal that is deceased. Hand it over, Posty. I've got a bat in the car. Don't make me go and get it. I need a float. I haven't got time for you drug dealing filth. I'm back out to five. Amphetamine is a psychostimulant drug which is known to produce increased wakefulness and focus in association with decreased appetite and fatigue. Recreational users of amphetamine have coined numerous nicknames for amphetamine, some of the more common street names for which are Speed, Crank and Whiz. Oh, hold my sack! Two, three, four, five. He should be locked up. That's discrimination, and it's rude to point. I know some more interesting facts about illicit drugs. I don't know why I ever bothered to bring that back. Four bags! So it's the myopic postman who deals on his rounds. Myopic? Short-sighted? Don't they be teaching you nothing in CID? Let's see your lip, Mahatma. At least in the CID we dress and behave like policemen. Rejects from the bloody X Factor. Rumour is he works for Chris, but you didn't hear it from me. Chris the hairdresser. Man's loaded. Flash car, big house. Yet he only does a couple of perms a week for old biddies. 
Everyone knows he's up to something dodgy. It's just a question of what. Did you notice anything when you interviewed Mrs. Milden? It wasn't us who spoke to her. We got the file up from uniform. Why? Ah. Don't like seafood. Where the blinder Gwent are they? Well, about time to I'll get in here now. <laughs> this should be good. <laughs> Have a listen, girlie. Well, how did you do? Well, we caught up with four. Yeah? But Billy the Bricks and I beef at a rave or something. Uh -huh. Some of the pimps doing a two yeah, stretch. But how much? How much did you get? 2,500. Two five? Is that all? Well, sorry, Dave, that's all that was out there. Well, that's it. I'm finished, aren't I? I've emptied the safe, the lot. Four and a half grand is all I can muster. If that dog comes in, the shop will have to close. Well, I don't know what to say. Oh, no, no, it's not your fault. You try to do your best. <laughs> you find out? Nothing. Nobody would talk. No, me neither. Get over here. Well? I followed him like you said. And? He went in two betting shops and then he caught a bus. Yes, yes. But what did he find out? I don't know. I was running after the bus. Useless bloody tap! Dogs approaching the traps for the 3.33 at Romford. They bet down the card. Trap one, four to one. Trap two, five to one. Trap three, four to one. Come on! Trap four, ten to one. Trap five, ten to one. Trap six, six to four favorite. That's the one there. Going in at Romford, going in. Six to four equate to one and a half to one. That would be £7,500 to pay out for Trap 6 wins. Arses! Here's running Romford. Come on. One, two, three, four. And they're off. Four. Into the first bend, it's three who leads. Ahead of one, yeah. they're followed by Come two. On, two. Come on. There's been some bumping at the back. Four and five have been badly hampered. Come on, one. Come on, one. Six dollars run wide and missed the trouble. Come on, one. Come on, one. Down the back straight, he's still trapped three, three leading. With one moving up on the inside. Come on, two legs back to two. Ella, one more. Ella, Ella, Ella. Six is a further two legs behind. Four and five are out of it. Come on, two. Into the final bend, it's one taking over for three. Two closing between dogs. Six and five is bound to challenge. Up towards the line, it's one and two, two and one, it's neck and neck with six getting closer all the time on the outside. And the line is one, two, six, they've gone past, they got a photograph, photograph, too close to call. Lord, have mercy. Well, did the six dog win? Come on, I can't stand the suspense. I'm getting there. What one? Couldn't tell. If it wasn't for that trouble at the first bend, six would have murdered them. May still have got up on the line. No good to you then? No, but it's Dave I'm more bothered about. <laughs> Look at these two over there. What one died? No, I, I don't know, Roy. <laughs> what do you think? Wasn't watching, Chris. Just this bloody tap. Are you alright, Dave? I'll let you know in a moment. Result of the photograph at Romford. Win a trap. Six. Bugger. <laughs> Bollocking, useless, mouldy, sodding biscuits. Dave? Oh. Dave? Dave, are you alright? Alright! I think he's fainted. Can you get a glass of water? Fainting is the colloquial term for the medical condition known as syncope. A sudden, usually temporary loss of consciousness, generally caused by insufficient oxygen in the brain, either through cerebral hypoxia or through hypertension. Shut up, Joe. Ray! What's that point funny about? Oh. It won, didn't it? The sixth dog. 
Yes, Dave. It got a bit of short head on the last. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Well, that's it then. So, the quiet man back the six dog, eh? Five grand at six to four. Fair play. Seven thousand five hundred pounds. Plus, of course, the return of the initial stake. You're not helping, Joe. I just don't have it. Don't you? Dickhead! I've emptied the safe, sold everything I can sell. What would these two boys brought in? I'm still £3,000 light. Well, what's going to happen, Dave? I can't pay it, can I? I'm going to have to Welsh on the bet. And that'll be it, won't it? I'll never be able to trade again. This... This shop will have to close, boys. You, you mean close? Close like on Christmas Day? I ain't chuffing Christmas. No, Scooby. Close for good. Permanently. You, well, what will I do? I can't help you, boy. Well, I'm not going to no sodding home. So, what will you do, Greek? Which shop will you use? I can't use Ladbrokes or Corals. I'm barred from both. I won't set foot in that bald-headed bloke's place. He charges a pound for tea and coffee. Davey only charged 50p. I heard from a client that Hills is being bought by a lap dancing chain. It's closing next week, so that's out. That's it, then. I'm out of a job. No one's going to let me flog my stuff while I'm at work. And what am I going to do with him? I can't take him with me on a proper job, can I? I'll look after you, Raymond. Richard, we haven't got all night. Where are the drugs? What? Where is Mrs. Mildenhall's money? Uniform didn't tell you, did they? Tell us what? Mabel lives at the McCormick unit in hospital because she believes she's Napoleon Bonaparte. What? Come on in, Joe. Let's get down to the job centre and see what they got. I would like to work in television. Do you think that's possible, Raymond? Joe. But no character like you is ever going to make it on the small screen. And don't call me that. On my way home at night, I... I buy myself a packet of lovely biscuits. Uh, uh, special ones. Belgian chocolate. They're two pounds a packet. Until Tina opens up next morning, I don't speak to a living soul. The, the wife, uh, she died giving birth to Lizzie, oof, 40 years back. And Lizzie moved to Australia, and I haven't heard from her since. Shame to me. It's eating those biscuits that keeps me going. What do you say, Greek? Can you run to a grand? Or shall I put it in for you? I heard you hadn't put it in for years, you old queen. <laughs> Pay the lady. I'll write you a check. Checkbook. I haven't got it, Chris. Well, where is it? In the car, maybe? Well, go and get it! <laughs> Let's check, Greek. Won't bounce, will it? I'll bounce you down the high street, you old man. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, 
So, you admit it. You gave Mabel's money to Dave. Shall we say I allowed the money to be kept securely in Dave's safe overnight so it couldn't be stolen? The arrangement was Mabel would have her money by the weekend. She will. I don't trust you, Richard. Let's not make a sing and dance about this, Sergeant. You aren't going to charge me with anything, are you? Not when it's my word against Napoleon's. I get it. Sing and dance? It's <laughs> quite good. <laughs> Fastidio Dizis. Down the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs>